Hey everybody, we got I gotta hunt down. I gotta hey Caitlin. Okay, I gotta find I gotta find our special guest. Hold on. Oh there she is. There she is. All right. Okay, now I gotta make her big. When she gets here. There she is. There she is. Hello. Let me buddy. Okay, she's coming. Welcome, welcome, everybody. Come on in, grab your drinks. We are all snowed in together. There you are. How's it going? Oh, it's going. Good. Are you Negative. snowed in? We're not snowed in, we're frozen. So uh, it's a uh, negative four. Oh my God, that's about, we're not negative four, we're like 20, but it feels like negative four. No, it's, it actually is negative four. So it, it feels like, that feels like negative 15, I think is what they're saying. I know, I was like, if, if this all goes down, if this goes south, it'll be because, the, I mean, if I lose power and everything, party's over, it'll be because of ice, but I don't think we've got any right now. So thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for reminding Look at me. You. We're very excited. We just had a meeting. We're very excited. I have all the questions from the team. So we're ready to go. Cool. cool. Give everybody cool. a chance to get in. You know, I was joking with them while well, I was even joking with you a little bit. Um, you know, I basically call you the BTS Katie Couric, except for you're like funnier and sexier is kind of how I, and I was just going to tell you, like when I very first got on TikTok, I originally started as a K-drama girl. Hmm. And so I was like, you know, it was, it was um, Ken G and Nunes Nucci and things like that. It was all K-drama stuff. And then when I got into BTS, and I kind of started getting into all the BTS stuff. You were like the very first creator that started sort of coming across my feed. And I was like, she's really smart. I mean, she knows her stuff. She's really cool. Okay. I don't feel like I'm, you know, weirdo for being like totally into this. And then, so you kind of started my whole journey, like on the whole TikTok thing. Oh, wow. Yeah. Insane. I started TikTok. It was during the pandemic and I, and I used it, it was just, you know, to fuck around. <laughs> It wasn't anything like serious. And then I don't even, it was in 2022 sometime. I started doing the news just randomly. Like it was just sort of oh, like a okay, random so that's thing. what I was going like, to ask you. If you just kind of came up with the idea one day and you just went full force for it. Yeah, it was because it, before I was doing just random dumb shit. And, uh, and then I, I don't even know what got me to do it. But I was just like, here's everything that happened yesterday. Like it was a day that just a lot of shit went down. Like they stuff. were doing a lot. They were doing yeah, a lot during that time. Yeah. It was, it was, um, I want to say it was before they, it was before their, the Festa, um, 2022 Festa. So, mm -hmm. um, I just started doing it and cause I had been on TikTok since 2021. What were you doing before you started doing this? Kind of, I mean, this content, what kind of content were you doing? Just kind of hanging out or? Yeah, I was just kind of hanging out. I was cracking jokes. You know, mm -hmm. so it wasn't, it was all, it was all joke based. None of it was serious. I right. got a couple, I did, I think I did, um, I, I did a video about gin that got a lot of traction, but then got taken down because, uh, <laughs> I was talking about how he had a big old dick and then, you know, <laughs> put up awesome. photographic evidence. <laughs> and so that's actually, that's the video that made Jen and I become friends. She was just like, girl. <laughs> Well, Jen was, was the other person that I that I saw on TikTok very, uh, right away. Jen was the other one, definitely, for yeah. sure. And, yeah. yeah, she. We became friends. Yeah, she was one of my first friends on here, and it was that video. And then, uh, and then people were like, "Do one about Yungi," and so I did one about Yungi. That one got taken down too. <laughs> did you keep copies of those? Yeah, I still got them. Okay, good. I was gonna say because one day you can look back on those, you know, and you can be like, "Well, I remember when, you know, yeah, I, was... I remember back when," and, I, and, I, and they got taken down, and then the gin one got taken down, and then it got reinstated, and then it got taken down again. <laughs> so they, even it TikTok would definitely wasn't get taken down today because they're a lot more picky on everything now. Oh yeah, no, I had I found out that I had a video taken down in November. I didn't even know. I was really? just scrolling through, and I was like, "Wait, this was taken down." <laughs> They didn't I'll tell me. Once in a while, there's like no sound, and I'm like, "Wait a minute, what did I do?" I yeah. mean, well, you know, the unoriginal content one that gets me sometimes, and I'm like, "That's the most original shit I've ever made. How could that be unoriginal?" I literally wrote that. Yeah. <laughs> that original. Yeah. Like, who am I copying? Yeah, 
I mean, that's really interesting because did you ever like when you were kind of deciding, okay, I think I'm going to do this regularly. I'm going to do this bang tan news thing and this mob shit, which we'll get into in a minute. But did you ever like have imposter syndrome or fear it at all? Or were you just like full steam ahead? I'm here. I'm going for it. Every time. Even to this day. I, after I'll post something, I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? <laughs> What am I doing? You know, and uh, it's every time. And I don't know that there's an imposter syndrome because I know I know what I'm talking about, but I, right. but I think there is a certain level of why does anyone want to listen to me? Like, why are people listening to this shit? You know, <laughs> why, why, why are they going to me? Like, why am I the one that they want to hear from? Because you actually sound smart, and so it makes the rest of us like, okay, she knows her shit. That might be what it is. I don't know. I don't think. I mean, I, I don't think I'm. I don't think I'm particularly smarter than anyone else i just think i'm capable of stringing some words together so they sound relatively appealing i think that's really what it is um but i don't know that i'm anybody's i'm not smarter than anybody else but um, well you definitely have an ability to not only take in the information like especially with like the mob shit you're able to really dive into stuff the corporate stuff and all that and make it make not only make it make sense but mm -hmm. make it witty and funny you know what i mean like I'll, most people can't do that like I, to put together a good thought and make it funny is a gift. I mean, that is, it's amazing. And it, and I, it, I love the mob shit stuff because I walk away from that like, holy shit, I never would have ever figured that out, but it's so interesting. So how did you go from like bang tan news, I'm gonna give you the weekly thing to, okay, I'm gonna go hard and heavy and get you into the back, the back room sort of business parts of it. I think part, I think it started when the anthology was being released, when proof was being released and people were like, it's an anthology. What? And they just automatically assumed compilation. Right. Um, and I was like, there's a difference between an anthology and a compilation. And I threw up a couple different anthology. I, I think I used the Beatles as one queen as another example. Be like, here's everything that's on their anthologies. Mm -hmm. It's like, it, it, you have to get to a certain point in your career to be able to release an anthology. Right. Anything not everybody can, can you do got that. two albums, you can put them together and it's a compilation. Yeah. You know? Right. So, but an anthology is different. And that's when it kind of started when I realized there's a lot of people out there that don't have any media literacy training whatsoever. Right. You know? And it's not it's not necessarily that it's anybody's fault, but it's just that it's just something that people don't know. You know, mm -hmm. and I was like, well, mm -hmm. I do know. So I might as well be like, because people are freaking out. And the one thing that I can't stand is when I see people up in arms and freaking out over something and they're incorrect. Right, it's not even I mean, yeah. that really that drives me yeah. absolutely batshit. Mm -hmm. And this, so it started off as for my own, my own peace of mind. Right. <laughs> All right. I, this is what it actually is. Calm down. That right. you know, was kind right. of how that started. And then it really kicked off when Hybe was trying to acquire SM, mm -hmm. and people are freaking out. And I'm like, no, you don't understand. And of course, it was the SM people losing their minds. I was like, no, you don't understand. SM has been garbage for a long time. Right. And this is right. what's good. Here's a company that is yet to be proven to be garbage, trying to take, not take over a company, but step in to try to improve what Save was a company that is garbage. OG, OG mm -hmm. entertainment companies in South Korea. Like mm -hmm. right now there's a recession happening in the OG companies and they're falling apart because, you know, the mighty will fall. Right. Um, and for them to go, no, we, we, we're, this is good because we'll add you to our umbrella, but also this, it'll, you, you will help, it can help you, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so there's a lot of stuff and then people in, and then those folks freaking out about certain contracts about members, solo member, members doing their solo things and what right. actual contracts look like. Um, right. Why isn't Hybe or Big Hit advertising that so-and-so is advertising so-and-so it's like well because mm -hmm. the company didn't hire big hit they hired that one member so the company's I not love your explanation on that one. i watched that one multiple times where you yeah. were explaining that like why would they i think you were talking maybe it was jenny's kitchen time i can't remember exactly so forgive me but you were talking about like why would that why would big hit be out promoting his you know, side gig when they didn't like, I just remember you going through all that. And I was like, that makes so much sense because people on well yeah. here and especially Twitter get their panties in such a wad over every oh, little well. thing without yeah. knowing what the hell they're talking about. And so when I found that video, I was like, okay, thank you for making this not only yeah. make sense and be logical, but like calm the fuck down people. No one's going right. to, Right. No one's being and mistreated like, here. I mean, right. No one's being mistreated. What bit, what hype is and big hit particularly is in that moment is they are, the members 
legal representation. Right. And so they are the, they are the controller of the the contract. So now where there is a difference is like a company say like like Samsung or Hyundai. Now mm -hmm. they hired not only BTS, but they hired Big Hit. They hired both. And so that's where you're going to see like behind the scenes of filming of a commercial. Okay. They okay. hired both of them. <laughs> you know what I mean? Whether yeah. it be like, especially with like Samsung being like, you know, all the TVs that you're going to have in the high building, Samsung, mm -hmm. you know, Samsung. so like, you know, you're, the company cars, Hyundai Palisades, <laughs> you know, so you're going to see. And so it's all contractual. And I think right. to a certain level, I can spot like with the moves of a company, I can tell what kind of contract it is baseline, what kind of contract mm -hmm. it is just based on what the company itself is doing. Just by kind of what they're putting out to the world, like what, like, right, what they're putting out to the world or in actual press releases or like, how, where are you getting, like, how do you, I know I'm, I might be chasing a squirrel here, but so, for example, the Scooter Braun thing, when all that shit went down and everybody was freaking out and da, 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 and then people were, you were, you came in to explain, hey, like, I understand that they look like they're jumping shit, but you can't be an owner and a manager and you can't do all that. So, like, when you get these moments and these big news stories are coming out, do you just kind of start diving in and you pick and you're like, oh, that's going to be a hot thing? Because you tend to do it, like, right in the moment and you've got the information, like, right when it starts happening. So yeah, how do I, you, do you look at press releases? Do you just look at the internet and see everybody freaking out and then you go look typically i'm typically i'm tipped off it can be a little bit of both typically i'm tipped off i'll go on twitter and if i see several people just freaking out about one thing i'll go what the fuck is going on and so then i'll go in and start looking so i'll pull up mm -hmm. neighbor do the search on neighbor a lot of times you can do a google search and there'll be the english translations of these articles on the you know korean american news outlets you'll see a lot okay. of Mm -hmm. you know, it'll pop up on there. I'll get an idea. I'll go to neighbor, search it up, go looking through there and then see what I can find. The, the, the scooter Braun thing, high America and him becoming the CEO. And the minute I it said, it, I saw that people were jumping ship from scoot. I was like, I bet you he's CEO. And I was right because you can't be yeah, an yeah. owner and also a manager. The managers, mm -hmm. the managers, goal is the their, their 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 focus is the artist in the the ceo's focus is the company and not the all company. they don't know those things don't always go right. so you, you can't, can't really be on both teams you have to be no, on one or the other and fight for your own team right yeah. which is exactly why like bang pd stepped down from being ceo because his thing was the music and the artist that's where he realized his thing was which is why he's still president of the board but he's not the ceo because mm -hmm. he was like i don't like this <laughs> moved on but he made that decision like so. Ellen DeGeneres being on the voice and she's like I don't like having to be mean to people I mean you're like you know pick what you're good at and he was like yeah right. CEO not for me I love to take care of my boys kind of thing right. as CEO yeah. he would have to he would be the one to have to look at them and tell them no right whereas as the president of the board but then main producer he can look at them and say yes Right. You know, so, you know, it's not his life. thing. It's not his thing. So now he has, it's a conflict of interest, as somebody just said, mm -hmm. Yazi. Mm -hmm. It's a conflict mm -hmm. of interest, which is why, so, but people don't always see that. They're like, oh, he's jumping ship. Oh, wow, this looks bad for the CEO, which is why Scooter, as shitty as he is, went on to social media and was just like, you guys have no idea what's going on. And he was <laughs> right. He was absolutely yeah. correct. No one knew mm -hmm. what he was, but it's because he, no, he can't be their manager anymore. You know, and a right. lot of times when you lose a manager, a lot of artists will then go and just shop for a new manager as opposed to being passed on to somebody. It, it needs to be somebody that they trust. So they're going to shop for a new one, you know? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's what was going on with that. But I was like, everyone calm down. And then even with Ginny's kitchen, out. everyone was freaking out. I was like, it has nothing to do with Hybe America. What I think right. people don't realize is that Hybe America is under the umbrella of Hybe. They don't sit like this. They sit like this. Mm -hmm. And I think they, they really, they don't, they're not the same. <laughs> your, you know, your, like, your, your visual on your wall with like the stickers in the in the yard or whatever you have see i mean i'm just like this is like perfection that that video where you were describing okay hive is this and big hits it it does not fit under the it's not a subsidiary it's over here and i was like this is what i need because <laughs> i'm a visual person and trying to oh, like figure it out in my head and then you did that and it's funny because i'm like i can be sort of a lazy fan because i don't have to figure it out because i just come to your page and then you're just going to tell me what I need to know. I don't have to go diving into it. You know, I don't have to do it. You do the right. job for and, us. <laughs> and so I had the, it's still on my door. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but yeah, but just even with the Ginny's kitchen, like Ginny's kitchen in international in the international sphere of thing was on Amazon. 
big hit currently has in hype current currently has to deal with disney plus they're not going to advertise amazon they can't it's probably in their contract that they can't but what they can do is post up when it's live on television and so that's what they did jenny's kitchen is on at this day every week like clockwork they would tell you when jenny's kitchen was on because mm -hmm. this is the best they could do they probably didn't have the rights to a lot of the images either so, but with Nam Junes, they produce Nam Junes show. Right, <laughs> so they right. Them, you know. That's so, so, so then, did they buy the rights then to like all the music that went into Jenny's Kitchen? Since they were all, is that how that worked? Because they were Jenny's BTS kitchen, songs. Jenny's kitchen, yeah. Jenny's Kitchen's got Jenny's Kitchen got the rights to use those songs. So they okay. paid they paid Hybe and or Big Hit and BTS to use those songs. Mm -hmm. It definitely helped them that Tay is on the show. Right. And Tay can tell them if they can or cannot use his voice. And he was like, yeah, <laughs> you know, put my music in there, you know? And so, you know, they, so, you know, with him having the rights, he probably was just like, yeah, go for it. <laughs> you know, like, it's fine by me. You know, makes it's more like me because, like, you kind of had the same goal that I had when I did this thing because the thing that drives me the most crazy is the false information that gets out there and everybody gets their panties in a wad and everybody starts freaking out and you're like and i think for new people especially and i was a new person i'm still a new person to try to figure out what's real and what's not real and some of it doesn't matter but a lot of it actually does if you care about them as people and especially if they're going to get you all worked up thinking that porte is being mistreated while the others are being you know what i mean like that gets people all worked up and emotional and it's just and, and, a quite, and quite frankly quite frankly tay the more he was able to do the more you could see that he was doing what he wanted most entertainment companies would not have let, given him that sort of freedom so clearly he was just going i want to be on this show with my friends right <laughs> and they were like right. okay, okay. <laughs> you know like yeah go for right. it dude you know yeah. any other, Knock yourself like, out. other agencies they would not have and the fact that they hive and big hit didn't have any rights to that show and they still let him do it they didn't make any money off of it they made money with the with the you know the use of the music but so did tay right <laughs> you know what i right. mean so you know mm -hmm. they didn't and i was like i think you guys don't understand how free he is being able to do this shit and then he went off and made a dance was. album. Right. <laughs> like, an album that they knew was a niche, a niche album. <laughs> and he was like, this is what I want to do. And they were like, okay, oh, go for okay. it. He's like, I don't even want to use a big hit producer. I'm going to use Min Hagen because I like that yeah. one album she did with FX, mm -hmm. which is not even with Hybe. <laughs> There's an SM yeah. group. And he was and like, nobody... okay. Yeah. Well, the funny thing is, is the ability that some people have to then spin that narrative and be like, see, he had to go use a different producer because blah, 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 blah. And it's just like, oh, well, my God, this is exhausting. It literally, it's like he sees that shit because he literally comes around in the next in the next interview and goes, yeah, I really like that FX album she did. So I asked her if she would do it. And then she comes around and she was like, yeah, he asked me and I almost said no. But what they don't realize is that even at the time, she's under Hybe herself. So she's part of the right. company, you know, but he was just like, no, I just like that one album. And I was like, hey. You want to do my album for me? We got six months. <laughs> you know what I mean? So like, they, but I yeah. think people just don't, they, and I think it's, they hear all of the, and it's them falling for the stories. It's falling prey to the horror stories that K, these K-pop companies are all trash and mm -hmm. exploited it when mm -hmm. for, for much, yeah, yeah, they right. surely can be, but they're always, they're picking on the wrong case and they're picking right. on the wrong moment. And I was like, this is actually a moment of freedom for him. And right. the fact that happy for him. That, and it's twofold. You don't want to see it because you want him to be the victim. Because if he's the victim, then right. he needs a protector. And that's what you want to be. Right. And that's what you want to be. Yep. As a stan. And also, you want him to be this victim so bad that you're ignoring what he's saying. So now you're not listening to him. So are you really right. protecting him or right. are you harming him? You have right. become. Do you not what see the joy that he's get from doing it? I mean. Right. He was prancing naked on a beach. Yeah. He was buying floral shirts for everybody. He loved every freaking second of it. I, I know, mean, and he's prancing. Yeah. He, has his, he has his gang of queer millennials, and they're prancing along a French beach. Are you fucking kidding me? The man was living his dream. Totally <laughs> was. Like, totally was. Yeah. You know, well, covered in Chanel. Some, like, in some of it also is I think some people don't like him being happy apart from the BTS members. Oh, absolutely. You know what I mean? They, they no just way. only want him to no think that only they only love individually. each other. There's no way they could be individually satisfied just as their own right. person. Like that's right. something that's not allowed to believe. And if I was told that I had to stay in a in a in a dorm room with the people who I've spent the most time with in my life for the rest of my life, I would yeet myself out of window. <laughs> yep. Yep.
Literally, it's like, it's like that hyper romanticized version in their mind that they have, and anything against that is like sacrilegious almost. Oh my god, it's awful! Like the, <laughs> I'm thinking of like the three people that were literally in my house yesterday. It came to a point where I stood up from the table and I was like, "Well, there comes a time for everything. Get out." You know? What I mean? like, <laughs> yes. Yeah. So like he's the, it's the, the idea of them being individuals and finding individual happiness outside of BTS, finding oh. individual happiness even within their careers outside of BTS is right. really hard for people to because they they have romanticized the whole thing. I was like these men, Yoongi and Namjoon used to get into fist fights. Like do you want you, you know what I mean? Like it's not happy go lucky all the time. Right. Now they realize you know that they would probably kill for each other. They had but also right. they're also completely willing to be the people who kill each other. Like they right. love, it. no one's allowed to right. touch that person, but I That's will exactly be the one that right. ends you. Well, it's kind of like how we get with family. It's everybody gets with family. It's like, I can talk about my family, but you better fucking not talk about my family. I mean, right. that's kind of how they are. It's like, right. I mean, I think they're going to be so much better after having this appreciation. You don't know what you got till it's gone. You know, the old 80s song. But I mean, it, you don't know necessarily. Now they've had this time apart. The other thing I really think is interesting, and I'd love your take on it is I feel like, but you know them better. I'm very new at this, only like 14 months in. I feel like almost every decision they have made has been, just turned out to be an ex, like their whole path, every choice they made, even during COVID and during everything has just been the right step all the way through. I mean, no, that's my take on it. They've made, some mistakes. They've made some mistakes. They've uh, yeah. made some mistakes. Oh, um, they? Okay, so give me yeah. an example of a big mistake they've made. I would love to kind of get the other side, the non-romanticized version from Dana to help American us. Hustle life was garbage. They made most of their mistakes in the beginning. In the early um, days? Yeah. And I think, so American Hustle Life was a mistake. Like we look back now and be like, that was character building stuff, but like they could have avoided that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they could have, you know. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they put themselves yeah. through it. They put us through it. There was a lot of being put through it. They didn't need to do right. that. Um, right. I think, <sighs> I think I think they have they've done they've made the right decisions for themselves at the time based on the information and things that they had. Mm -hmm. You know, so I don't think they ever actively tried to sabotage themselves. I think right. that I think I almost think it was a mistake that they didn't follow through with their original plans of going into the military in 2020. Like 20. that's just me, but I feel like I feel like they could have still done that. But I can see how joining them, like going into the military, they've made decisions for army and not necessarily for themselves. On I was a few wondering if you thought that, mm -hmm. where I've been like, you can have done it. You could have done it for yourself. <laughs> you know, you, you can be you selfish every that. once in a while. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Every once in a while, there have been moments where you get the other side of the story. And I go, you could have done that for yourself, my guy. Mm -hmm. Like, I get why you didn't, but damn, like, you, it would have been fine had you done. So I think they haven't, they haven't, I don't know that they've made any missteps, like actual missteps in quite some time, arguably. Mm -hmm. I feel like they've done right by themselves. They probably could have taken a little bit more time off in 2018 and 2019. And it would have been fine. Mm -hmm. Probably would have been good for them too. Right. Um, but that's all in hindsight. Or but maybe even mistake. if maybe even if they kind of started off and it wasn't a great step, they're kind of able to rebound and turn it into something that that works for them. Yeah, you know, I think, I honestly, I think, I think, I think in the beginning, they were so desperately grasping at straws mm -hmm. that they made a couple of missteps. They made a couple of design choices, but I think it was a na na naivete to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, then I think it was, it, it was still early on, like, but we can't look at, you know, things at the lens of today for things right. that happened 11 years ago. Right. You gotta um, make it in the moment. You gotta remember the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. You gotta remember the time that you're in. And, but what's nice is that they real, they, it might've taken a minute, but they were just like, that was a bad call. And so mm -hmm. they, they've, they've grown and they've like, you know, they've developed and kind of moved out yeah. of those things. But, um. But so, you know, no, they've had their moments where I was just like, ah. and it, it was because of those mistakes, those decisions that they made in the early days where I was like, this isn't for me. <laughs> really? <laughs> really? Yeah, I can look back on it. I can look back on it now and uh, go, okay, this music is more appropriate for them to perform now. Okay. But the early days, those first like year and a half, maybe almost two years, I was just like, so what know. what initially kind of were you a K poppy first? Did you listen to K pop or did you find them totally just brand new off the like how did you find them? I went to Korea for the first time in two thousand five. Okay. 
So I've known about K-pop for a long time. Like mm -hmm. back in the day when you had to like download it off of BitTorrent. <laughs> wow. And, uh, yeah, it's been a minute. It's been a while. I listened to Big Bang and I liked 21. And then I was a casual fan of other groups. I liked Shiny. Um, but then, so I was completely aware of BTS when they came out. Okay. And I did not like it. <laughs> I was just like, what the fuck is that? The first time I saw it. No more dream. I was like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> you know, I was just like, did you feel like, like they were trying too hard, or kind of yeah, what? What was the vibe? They were, they were trying too hard, and uh -huh. they and they were. I even remember thinking the music that because you know what it was. It was the Machne line actually that turned me off the most because I was like, <laughs> they are too young for what the fuck they're talking about. They are yeah. too young for how they're acting. They're too young. They're too yeah. young and they're trying too hard. This and they look even younger, so that doesn't help. <laughs> you know and i was just like oh, okay and at the time in 2020 in 2013 i was how old was i in my mom was in my late 20s so okay. i was already kind of like the idea of dealing like with a 15 year old yeah, did not uh -huh. yeah. you know it wasn't until maybe a year and a half later when i was like oh it's them again what All was right. the song what was the what was that that made you go oh it's them again it was spring day no it was before that they had moved out of their school era okay and they were by way age okay and then i was just like this those guys yeah. <laughs> there was kind of a shock so I was that, like, did the hyyh since you're sort of you're you're an intellectual did that sort of the fact that they had kind of really gone into that more storytelling like everything's connected there's a there's an arc here did that kind of tweak your interest more no, because it had just started. And so the okay. story hadn't really come out yet. Like right. that was something that built upon. We look back on it right. and go, damn, that was a whole right. fucking story. Right. <laughs> you know? right. At the time it was just like, what are they doing? No, what it was is they seemed a little more, more authentic. They had like, okay. they had like gotten rid of like the, you know, the cause, the hip hop cosplay. And they mm -hmm. had moved into, it really kind of felt like themselves. Cause I remember mm -hmm. looking at G-Man when he was, you know, during the back, the, you know, the school era. And I was just like, this kid is a marshmallow. The fuck is he doing? <laughs> going to be hard. With the you big know? jewelry and the, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. Yugi, I believed. I was like, yeah, he's actually like that. <laughs> yeah. But like, there were a few, it just, it didn't seem authentic. Now they can perform the songs cause they kind of now have, they had, they've grown and they can actually feel that. Right. It, right. it's real it's not it's well they've kind of been through the rough streets now in this world so they can actually kind of sing what they were sort of right building, now they actually have they have some they have some stories and the some life experience against yeah. it and like experience right. it right and so the the hyyh era felt a little more more authentic and it felt like they were actually kind of speaking for themselves finally mm -hmm. you know because they were i mean they were namjoon had taken over a lot of the writing so would yoongi so would hobi they had really kind of started be like no we got to start and i think that was even when um bang pd was just like i think we need to stop yeah. faking yeah. kind of start going for real yeah and um and that's when it became more appealing and i can go back and like i still like when watching the new stuff i'm like oh my god if i see them perform it now so like during like magic shop they performed it i was like makes far more sense them doing it now makes way more sense and feels way more authentic and feels like now this is good if they had released this song now this would have been a fucking banger right <laughs> you know right, so, right. yeah but yeah they, that um, makes total sense mm -hmm. yeah and it's and, just interesting to me because it's almost like the min yungi of it of of almost being a fortune teller being able to almost know like we're, this doesn't apply to us now we're writing these lyrics now they don't apply quite yet but give us a little bit of time and this is going to be our story almost you yeah. know what i mean it's I mean, like this weird i think i think they fell into the fact that it actually works for them now i don't think they ever anticipated it actually fully working for them because like i said in those early days they were cosplaying what they thought mm -hmm. was hip hop. <laughs> Yeah. So how did you guess you called the H Y Y H coming back thing? Like yeah. you were like, I think that's coming. How did you, how did you kind of think? Yeah, I think this is actually gonna, they're gonna bring this back around. What was it that made you think that? No, that they've, never so let it go. they've never mm -hmm. let it go. They've always, they've, they've never actually let it go. It never closed. Even mm -hmm. like H Y Y H went into love yourself. And even in you love yourself, you had the H Y Y H notes in the love yourself albums. They've never mm -hmm. actually let it go. And I, I was like, they would have closed this out for real, real if it was actually going to be done and it's not and i was like this because and honestly hyyh was a huge turning point for their career i was like they're gonna do something with this because one mm -hmm. they've never let it go two they still talk about it you know 
the the themes have still run through everything. Mm -hmm. So I was I just had the sneaking suspicion. I was like the fact that not a single one of them has been like we're never doing that again. Yeah, I was like okay. This is to a newbie like me. And like, I just saw a couple of comments to a newbie like me, the way that H Y Y H is talked about, it feels like, it feels like such this huge, like, do I even have the brain capacity to understand? Do I need to understand? Like, what is your take on that? What is your, like, because I see people panicking like on things and they're like, Oh my God, I got to figure this out before. And I know we're going to do a month on it, you know, with our thing, but there's like so much there. Like, what do you think the basics is? Okay. This is what's important to know the rest of it. Or do you think, yeah, dive all the way in and figure that shit out. It's kind of like when you become a new parent and the advice you get is you're never going to fully understand what you're doing. That's H Y O I H. You're never going to fully get it. <laughs> there's, there's always going to be something new that pops up where you're like, holy shit. Like I said, they've never actually let it go. So they've been they've been Easter egging this shit for 10 years. So you're never gonna let it go. And the fact that it is a fictional drama mm -hmm. being told by real people about their real experiences. <laughs> like and then being told too. Yeah. How many need that went on the door as well? Yeah. Yeah, it's like it's a fictional story about fictional characters being told by real people about their real experiences, but it's fiction, but it's nonfiction. It's not. And it's a graphic novel and it's a fantasy story and it's several albums and it's a whole book of notes. It's Doctor Who. <laughs> so like Jin's wow. traveling through time. Mm -hmm. Like they were telling fake love is H Y Y H still. All wow. of those things in fake love how they're each in their own little room right right H -Y -Y -H. See, i didn't know any of this this is why i have you now fake love is hyyh -H. and when fake love dropped it was four in the fucking morning and i'm laying on the couch and i'm watching it and i was just like they've just brought back hyyh -Y -H. It, it was hyyh -H. there had already been three or four music videos that they had done that had hyyh -H was done and then fake love dropped it's like this is H Y Y H all over. It's it, that's what it, they were telling that story again. They were going back into it again. The music video for what was it? It was one of the Japanese singles. It was H R Y H. Anytime Jin is seen, right? With a time turn like a like a like a like a sand clock thing. Mm -hmm. It's H Y Y H. The fact is that, that like Yungi with the door does the door count for Yungi? Like even if with his D Day stuff, the door. Yeah is it, the door is Jimin. Okay, because I just I was just looking at the D Day stuff when the door was so big for Amigdala, you know, all that, but no, I was just didn't know the, if that the door in. that door is the magic shop, I think. Okay. I think. But who knows? He says he's done right. with August D, but I don't believe him. Film out. That's the one. Film out. So anytime you see Jin with a clock in any way, shape or form, whether it be a sand clock or a dial or anything like that, it's H Y Y H because he is a motherfucking time traveler. And then in his army box, because they're the army membership boxes, right. like the right. before you, his came with a clock, a sound, a sand dial. It's technically for ramen. So you can cook your ramen with it. But I was like, <laughs> of course it's a fucking clock for gin. So interesting. And so it's even in their merch. <laughs> so it's like- I'm literally, I feel like I'm not smart enough for any of this. <laughs> no one is. I think okay. if you were to ask one of them, be like, oh, I spotted this one thing in that one video. They'd be like, word? What? <laughs> yeah. Like, for real? Oh, yeah, shit. I, I, was, I had no idea. Yeah. No, but fake love is HYYH. All of their themes that they're in, it's HYYH. It's insane. So how do you how do you foresee them coming back? Like, what do you think it's going to look like for the HYYH upon return? How do they hit that door? I don't even want to guess. Especially since it's a 10th anniversary, like, special thing. It's going to be insane. Uh -huh. It's going to be absolutely insane. How I wouldn't be surprised if they're already recording. Hmm? How long do you think they've been planning it? For the last 10 years. <laughs> I think, I think, I think, I, the fact that they've never let it go. They've always had plans to do something with this. Even Bang PD said, even if they weren't still with Big Hit, they would be doing this. Hmm. So... I wow. think they've, been, they've had they're like this is this is our theme this is our running theme and it's adjusting it. and it can change and it can swerve into things and they you know it's all like yeah I think I wouldn't even be surprised I would not even be surprised if we can somehow take every single one of their solo albums and work it into HYYH somehow wow I wouldn't be surprised at least rap line 
But Jimin too. Jimin's HYH storyline is all about mental illness and being trapped right. inside of a mental institution. And that's exactly what Face was about. <laughs> being trapped. <laughs> so I'm just like... It's mind-blowing. Yeah. It's like it's like Disney almost like everything about Disney and you just and when you're able to look back you can go oh my god that with that and that with that and that with that and they plan they had to have planned that because that was done this minute you know mm -hmm. it's brilliant yeah it's smart it's a lot smarter which is why like I don't know the comments she's the head of our research team you've not blown her mind this is what she's going to be trying to dive into now for the next okay I'm gonna, okay I'm gonna bring them in hold on so they can talk because they have questions hold on one second let me find them let me invite them because they were like, I have, okay, Christina, who am I missing? I think that's everybody. Let's see. Because they have questions. Too. Oh, I need, um, are you guys there? Yeah. Like, Lisa, I know you have questions. You ask while I'm looking for. Oh, oh, well, hi, Dana. Hi. I'm hey, Dana. <laughs> or Quinn. Um, I had one question for you. Um, so, uh, our biggest goal with like our project, um, the 529 thing is like building a community for uh, all of, well, for ARMY to feel safe and heard and just have a place to have fun and hang out. And so I was kind of wondering, um, and you, you've been in ARMY for a while now, like if you could name one thing, what's your like favorite fandom memory, your favorite ARMY memory, something you've done or people you've met, what's your favorite thing? You know, I don't know. That's kind of hard. I, I think where mine kind of gets muddled is that I have always had a group of people that literally live within a mile and a half of me that also participate in this crazy shit. Oh, so wow. I've never actually been, yeah, it's always been like, it. I mean, I was, I, I was, a, I was my lonely island for like when I listened to K-pop and shit like that when I was younger, but I was able to string in my buddy Mandy and then through her, she was just like, my buddy Will's wife is real big into this. She just texted me. And then she had a friend that she hung out with. And so now it's the four of us. Right. And it has been for years. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I think, so we've always had good memories in regards to that like we've been going to the right. shows together for years you know i've right. seen bts whether them you know as a group or solo i've seen them like 14 times so and i've always had somebody with me a buddy you know mm -hmm. um but i think what was really cool that stood out was when we went to see yoongi and then even a little bit when hobie did Lollapalooza, people would stop me and be like i know your face uh -huh. <laughs> i've, seen, I've yeah. seen you on the internet you know oh it's you oh you're her <laughs> And I'm just mob like, shit, mob shit. Yeah. And I'm just like me. Well, I hadn't, it, you know, I hadn't done mob shit yet with the Hobie Palooza. <laughs> people stopped me and they were like, you're the reason why I knew not to get on the red line. And I was like, oh, good. <laughs> you know, awesome. but so that was neat. And that was an experience I wasn't anticipating. And it was fun. The first person who came up to me, I was actually sitting on a bench trying very ferociously to get over the hangover that I had. And she approached me and she was like, you're on TikTok. And I went, oh, no, not right now. <laughs> Yeah, oh. I was just like, oh god, you know. So I was just like, I pulled myself together. I was like, it's me. <laughs> I was like, wow. trying not to puke. But it, it surprisingly like, turned into a good memory, and I was just it distracted me from the fact that I felt like absolute garbage, you know. Yeah. But so I've had some like I've had some really cool memories, and just people like I'll be walking, and then I hear somebody shout my name, and I'm like, <laughs> you know, like what the fuck, and I get to my seat or whatever. That's and so, so cool. that's really cool that you know that makes me feel good i got spotted even i was just visiting a buddy in los angeles and i got stopped by somebody who was just like i watch your videos and my buddy jesse was just like <laughs> what just happened so you know some cool things have happened since i've started doing tiktok that has been memorable um mm -hmm. so but i've always kind of that had kind like of a community out in the wild that you're out in the wild and people are like oh right yeah mm -hmm. but to go get at barbecue during it, it was Lollapalooza this year. I didn't go to Lollapalooza this year, but we were out with just a couple friends. You know, we went and got barbecue, and we went to go pay the bill, and somebody already paid it because they had spotted me. Dang! The and they, yeah, and my friends were like, "What the fuck, dude?" I was like, "That's what I'm saying. I don't know who did this." You know? <laughs> who was that? Like, what? Yeah, yeah. I How mean, like, did you know this? when you were famous? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Somebody like, bought my barbecue. No, my buddies like, my buddies are just like. Because she paid for the whole like bill was paid for. Nobody that would be as excited crazy. for free barbecue as BTS. Yeah. 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 No, they would be so excited. Moment, and I was just like, and I was just, am I living in a run episode right now? Is that <laughs> what's just happening? 
Because I'm staying here with three of my buddies. We got barbecue. I mean, it, it, there's no way it was a cheap bill. We had beer. We had soju. I was just like, oh, my God. And they Jesus never identified Christ. themselves, so you didn't even know who. You didn't even know who. Oh no! It was. Eventually, when all four of us turned in the booth and started looking at the crowd, they like, they, they did one of these. Really? And I was just like, "Come here, come here." And then her poor son was with her, and he had to take all the pictures. I was like, "You're a patient young man." <laughs> patient young man. Yeah. And he was just like, eh, "It's fine, you know." But That's that was amazing. Cool. Mm-hmm. Barbecue. I, so far, I'm the only person in Oklahoma on the map. We have a little map where you can pin yourself. So I'm hoping that there's more so I can maybe run into one. But there's I think there's be. like three or four. There has to be. There's got to be at least it's also. I know. I was like, I wonder if, well, never mind. I'm not going to ask that. But yeah, that's interesting. Okay. Who else has a question from the team? Oh, Doc, I know you had a big question. Is she still on here? Hold on. Did she disappear? Her TikTok know. crashed. She messaged. Oh, it did? Yeah. She needs back in. Can you let her back in? Yep. I'm letting her back in. It's the weather and everything. That's what I was concerned yeah. about. Well, Doc had like pages of questions for oh, you. Hey, I made like, it there. She is. Like she apparently, had- it was just too much for my TikTok to handle. Um, so um, I am the head of the research team, and we're kind of gearing up on my end to go into Wings era. And one of the questions I had, because you're an old, you you were around old school army is what was it like being army in the era leading up to hot do set that led them to write that song with with the issues yeah okay. with all the issues going on spill it you know, spill it spill it it was shit <laughs> it, was, it was shit and it was this it was this it was being like it's fine being the underdog but when you're the underdog that's just getting shit tossed at you constantly it's just like this is this is a someone's villain story this is their origin right. this is a villain or origin story and i think for the people who are around and bts themselves it could have gone in a completely different direction you know and so it's like you'd get on social media and just be dog piled on you know, and it was to the point where most people just didn't involve themselves in social media. Like I completely removed myself from Twitter. I was like, I can't fucking do this. Cause I'm one of those people who I, you can like whatever you want to like, you can like whatever you want to like, it's your thing. Right. Not do on your ass unless it's harmful to you or people around you. And that's just how I expect, like, I, I'm going to like what I like and that's it. You're not going to tell, you're not going to convince me otherwise. But when right. you're, you're just logging onto Twitter just to see if anybody fun has posted and what you see is members of different fandom communities or even the press being all like this group you like a lot fuck you <laughs> yeah, I'm like that's really what it was no. and it's base and it was fucking shit i completely separated myself away from it i was like i can't do this like i was like why why is this happening this is some dumb shit but i was like i just wanted and then there was that frustration and it where where it really got shitty was then the frustration you could feel within army of just wanting bts to look at these people and go fuck you right they, they want them. them to fight back you want yeah there was that moment yeah. so it was just like and then when they wouldn't and you understood why they wouldn't because they're mm-hmm. the underdog so what are they supposed to say they're supposed to turn to these you know companies and korea's built different dude you can't go to these people and say fuck you you know you right. can't you know they're older than you they're corporations they're and they're trying to make it work for themselves and so like we mm-hmm. would get it but at the same time i was like somebody tell somebody to fuck off please <laughs> and so it was like and so then we would and then it would, and then there would be, the, it, you know, it would be like two against 40. And then the 40 like exiles or whatever would show up and you're just like, ew. <laughs> you know? So there is this sort of frustration with, did, wow. So did the song help change the trajectory for ARMY or was it more of a soothing thing and time helped? It was a soothing thing. I mean, it's a, it's a fan song, you know? So it's, mm-hmm. it was more or less, it was them being like, calm down. It's going to be okay. And I was like, I want to fight though. <laughs> I might though. Some people took some some people took like solace in it and like took a lot of comfort. I was not one of those people. I wanted a shit talker, you know. So, right. but I got why they did it because they right. aren't like that. They are. I mean, they are, but they do it in subtle ways. Right. So really, you wanted a cipher saying "f you" and yeah. got hot dual set instead. Right. And so I was like, God damn, a little bit yeah. goddamn, yeah. you know. Yeah. But I got it because I was like, no, they're better than me. They're gonna have their day. I just want to fight. Sometimes silence is the best. Is the best. Sometimes, sometimes and I learned something yeah. in that too. 
you know. Yeah. So I was like, yeah. okay, so what they're doing because they definitely have had their day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they definitely had their day, and they've gotten their revenge in several it uh, right. twofold. So you do know. you think they were like fans were like so trained to like want to defend, defend, and they're fighting other people that now some of them just like since they don't have anybody to fight, they're just fighting each other. Because sometimes I feel like some of the worst battles are just between BTS like themselves, like fans themselves. People are so paranoid. <laughs> I think yeah, I think it's no, I think I think to a certain extent, when you have such a large group of people, there are going to be factions of people. Right. And then they're going to fight. Like, I look at it like a, like a state, right? So if I'll take it and I make it, like, I take army and they're the state of Illinois. Uh-huh. How different these different areas are. And then how we do this constantly. Just within right. the own, own state. And that's what it's like. So uh-huh. it's like, when you have the people, when they're fighting, it's Chicago versus the rest of the state. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like what, what it is, you know? And so that's kind of, I'm not surprised at all that there's fighting because there's so many. And there's always been fighting amongst yeah, really. and within ourselves. Just because there's so many, you know, because like like I said, there were people that wanted to fucking fight and then there were people who wanted comfort, you know? And so I was one of the people who wanted to fight. <laughs> then I had friends that just wanted comfort, <laughs> you know? And I was not, yeah. Yeah. So now I've taken kind of the back seat. I'm less likely to fight. You know, because I'm just like, I one, I'm too old for it. And two, it's like, why? Why would I spend my energy on some dumb shit? Like, I, why, I don't have to prove myself or right. the people around me or the people that I'm supporting. I don't have to prove nothing. So I'm right. not going to fight. They already proven themselves. So, like, what's the point of that? Right. Like, the money. They prove it yeah. in their money. They prove it in their <laughs> house. They prove it in their houses. They prove it in their cars, their big rings, whatever. Right. They prove it. They've proven it in their catalog. Right. They've proven it in their credits. They've proven it in their awards. In their awards. They've proven it in their nominations. In their collaboration. They've proven it on their yeah. t- in their courts. You know? Mm-hmm. And so it's just like, I could be like, I don't know. I don't agree with you. I'm going to get that shit done there, too. I mean, yeah. Yeah. You know? So. Yeah. It's. A, I mean, it, it is. It's like, you know, especially Yoongi, you know, and you see him take those fighter stances, you know, during zombie, you know, stuff and stuff like that. But, yeah, I mean, I'm sure that his instinct probably at some at some points is to is to fight back but then you see him in the session with and whatever and he's just so deep about everything that they really do teach really good lessons to the rest of us who could probably learn a thing or two but you know follow their Yungi, lead i think Yungi in his like to a certain extent i think that big hits isolated them a little bit fairly you know just kind of like we're gonna we're gonna mm, and i think it was that time in you know which did because you know they're they're saying now that they're kind of you know before they all enlisted they're for the first time entering and like interacting with people from other companies and other performances and i think because they put walls around themselves when that was happening and be like i can't get close to none of y'all we can't get close to none of y'all we can't do that because it was people connected to you that caused that right so we're going to kind of keep our distance and we're going to be the quiet kids in the corner insulate yourself a little bit from that whole and then I think they realized, uh, and then as they, they kind of started coming in, uh, they kind of started breaking away a little bit and their friend groups have expanded and, you know, and, you know, they're off doing their own thing and it's good for them now. But yeah, no, they definitely, I think they'll, they're, we're still dealing with the fallout from that. I don't mm-hmm. think that's ever stopped really. And mm-hmm. I mean, just look at these fucking fan wars. I've never seen people more brutal than on Twitter oh, from Twitter. Like, where somebody will say something dumb to like protect their group. And it's a different group. And of course they always, oh, well they beat BTS in this. And the actual like evisceration that will happen to that person. And I'm just like. Didn't you just get attacked on Twitter not long ago too? Didn't you have an interaction on Twitter or something? Did you? Somebody uh, did. Shannon did. Oh, that was, Sh- okay. Yeah, I knew somebody. Did. Oh, that's right. It was Shannon. I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I'm, I, I mean, so technically it. speaking, Dana did get blocked on Twitter because she uh, <laughs> told the, the, <laughs> The guy with the uh, comic book, where to put it? Uh, uh, yeah, I was blocked. I'm you know terrified like of Twitter. Like I will go on Twitter. I'm so scared of those. I'm so scared. I'm like that's like the group of kids in school that I sat as far away from as humanly possible because they I they just intimidated the shit out of me. Like I I'll sit over here in the corner. There are still there have been moments where I've been you know gone after on Twitter, um, but it's usually not because I've said or done anything that's like legitimately a, a hurtful towards somebody. It's because I've questioned somebody's morality on something. So like Tay cookers have come at me before. Um, 
who else have come at me before? Blinks went after me once. Is but you know, the badge of honor? <laughs> oh no, it's not the blink. It's just par for the course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel like every single one of us is going to have that moment. You know, uh -huh. and it's but there is just that kind of thing where I'm like, I y y this is this says way more about you than it does me. Right. <laughs> you know what right. I mean? Like, I don't know what to yeah. tell you, bud. You know? Yeah. Yeah. But, the fact that you need to pick this fight. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you think? I saw you kind of like, 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 talking about you know when when they went on their hiatus, you were you know about your content stuff. Do you think you're going to continue to really focus on BTS content while they're away? Because it seems like they're going to keep doing it. Or do you feel like you're you're going to try to start moving into different try different things or like what do you see your world looking like for the next 590 days while they're gone it's still gonna be bts related it might be more personal related um if you're asking if i'm gonna like start reporting on a different group no yeah um not in any way shape or form um yeah. but i will yeah i'll still be doing i might the news might be only twice a week it really depends on the content i'm not gonna be out there like oh here's the news and it's and thing you know what i mean like i'm not gonna waste anybody's time on that Right. But I will, you know, so it might be like a Monday, Friday sort of thing, mm -hmm. Monday, Thursday, okay. you know, the wrap up and the... it really depends on it. And that's if it, if it tapers off enough to do that, because as of right now, it hasn't, there's been a slowdown like that. Right. I've definitely seen very clearly, well, we had several you know, things whereas this week, I mean, several drops of photos and video, you know, all kinds yeah, of crap this and week. They're doing it and they're still doing it and things are still happening and blah, 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 you yeah. know, so it's very possible that I won't have to. Mm hmm. I mean, it's really just for the next like six months, not even right. And then Jin's Jen comes gonna back. The, and then Jen's gonna be back, and you know he's gonna have his ass on everything. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. I don't really anticipate him slowing down. He's gonna be like, woo, you know, and off he's gonna go. Well, it's but, funny because when we were doing the map a little while ago, you got to choose your bias, and then by based on your bias, you have your little army globe showed up on the map, right? So many Yungi, like, and then even when I I did a video today about you coming on here, and I was like. Elizabeth, what's your favorite Elizabeth? Blah, blah, blah. And so many Yungis. And I feel like, like, chapter two Yungi, like, stole, I mean, souls everywhere, all over the world. Do you think that Jen, that's, I, and I feel like that's what Jen's going to do. He's going to get us alone, and we're, everybody's oh, just going to go hardcore Jen. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's going to be Jin, Jin cult will rise. Yeah. Jin cult will rise. And it's going to be, it's, 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 yeah, it, it's going to be, it's, everyone's going to be like, oh, Jin. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and that's what it's going to be. No. Where you been hiding, Jin? Honestly, he's their sniper, man. He's going to fucking roll in there and uh -huh. he's just going to, you know, it's, it's, a uh, Jin will rise, you know, yeah. and then Hobie's right after that. And we're just going to hear, oh, Jin. And then it's going to be the two of them. Oh my God. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, Jin, Jin is going to just, he's going to sleep or sell his album out. Mm -hmm. And it's going <laughs> to, he's just going to, boom. I'm going to be Jin. And it's going to be well, insane. He's he's the gonna one that I feel shit. like I know the least. I know him the least because he was gone shortly after I kind of found them. So I've never really mm -hmm. experienced him, especially not one by one on one. But when I watch him in, in the soups and stuff like that, I just, I'm like, okay, I could see him snatching my soul. And so now it's like when I, when I know when he shows up in June, I mean, I mean, it's just going to be on. I mean, and to be fair, Jin is arguably the most private of the seven of them i know he seems to be the most boisterous but he's actually the most private and he uses his personality really to i think we don't know a lot about jen right <laughs> like we don't right. we've seen his bathroom we've seen his bathtub when he was making booze um we've seen <laughs> his kitchen and that's it you know so like he is in it arguably the fact that his friends were on the, on in the documentary mm -hmm. i was shocked as shit I was shocked that he showed his grade school friends. I was so surprised because he you is that arguing for what's to come. Do you think he's going to open up more or do you think he's going to stay as. I think he's going to open up more. I think he's going to take this as an opportunity to actually like show himself. And I mean, mm -hmm. listen, when he's back, he's going to be 32 years old. Like he's, right, you know, right. he's the proper, 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 proper grown ass man uh -huh. who is, you know, and we're going to think we're going to learn a lot about Jin. I think we're going to learn a lot about him and just in his album. I think he's going to be really right. honest. I bet you I wouldn't be surprised if he has most of the writing credits on it because that's probably what right. he's doing right now. Even he's enlisted, he's taking his time and just boop, 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 you know, writing stuff down. So. Well, and the opportunity I think they all have right now to see what they're made of and to see who they are apart from everybody else and experience something that's so different. I would think, 
Like, I just imagine them all having now so much to write about because they're just seeing themselves in a completely different way. And what, so I think that Army has to kind of prepare themselves for the, for the members that come out of military to have such a different perspective and be ready to receive a message that's going to be really different. Sure. It's going to be an adult message. It's not even that they haven't done adult themes before because they absolutely have. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think because we've seen groups come out of the military, like we've seen Shiny come out of the military and we've seen, you know, now I think we've seen Big Bang come out of the military. Big Bang kind of imploded while they were serving, but, you know, but I think, but Shiny out of them, out of like second gens, have released an album and they've done solo work and they've kind of, and we, we actually saw what like a, like a, a healthy return looks like through right. shiny um and but they still it, it they still because they are with sm their sound is still trendy i think so i think what we'll see with bts though is going to be a really mature sound especially after all of their their solo projects where they brought right. really developed sounds and now it's going to be taking all of those developed mature sounds and creating now mm-hmm. this yeah. what is hyyh <laughs> you know and it really makes sense that that's what they're going to be doing when they're all out because hyyh is when they started to mature right um, and, so, and so every every hyyh character that you were talking that's not fictional but is fictional but what the, you get the layers and now you get the layers of what their individual tastes were making an entrance into we're going to be mind blown beyond, I think. Yeah, it's going to be something. And I know it's and it's because BTS for a long time hasn't been like a follower up trend. They've been a trendsetter. Mm-hmm. And so I think this is they're going to it's not going to sound like what is going to be going on in K-pop, which is why K-popies have a struggle with BTS, because they have a specific idea of what the sound of K-pop right now should sound like. And BTS doesn't do that. And so neither did they neither did they do in their solos, even Jungkook with his American pop record. It doesn't right. sound like pop music in Korea right now. Right. Um, I was there when it dropped, <laughs> you know, so I was just like, this isn't what's being played out here, you know? So but I think HYWH is going to sound so very different. It, HYWH 2025 is going to right. sound so much different than any other of the music that's being. Do you feel like it sort of, here was my thing, because do you feel like it sort of has to be like an almost a whole new sound? Because otherwise I almost feel like they'll be like, well, they're not the same and their music's, you know what I mean? So they, they might as well do a huge departure and try something totally new because otherwise. I think they'll be harking. I'll, there'll be moments that come back to it. Mm-hmm. There are going to be moments that come back to it. Mm-hmm. And um, so it's going to be, and they've done that. They have pulled intros and popped them into newer songs and they've done, you know, and they've right. done part twos and they've right. done, you know, and so they, they're definitely going to, I think there will be bits that they're going to kind of pick and choose and they're going to, it's so it'll be all laced in and come together. But mm-hmm. the thing with their music is there's always going to be that person was, it doesn't sound the same. Well, no, because every album they've ever released has sounded different from the last. Mm-hmm. That's why they have an impressive discography. You can look at other groups and they've released the same song 20 times. Right. You look at BTS, right. every single song sounds different. Even the ones where they pulled stuff out of different, it still turns into something different. They're able to rework it and remaster it. Mm-hmm. So it is going to sound different. I mean, I, if it doesn't sound different, I will be fucking shook. Like, right. I will be surprised. It is going to sound different. And they've had a full 10 years to develop their sound and develop themselves. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's going to sound like HYYH, but it's going to sound completely different. So it's going to be so exciting. Like, it's hard to even know what to wrap your head around. You know what I mean? Like, it is kind of hard to even speculate because every time we speculate, we're made fools of. Right. (laughs) And then I was listening to Yugi when he was talking to JK about, you know, I've got all these songs waiting. I mean, I just imagine he's had songs written forever that wasn't the right time. It wasn't the right sound. It was. And then here we're going to have this whole, you know. I just think if they, I just, I don't know. I feel like if they're going to, they are going to come back. They're going to come back and it's going to be like, they're going to fucking blow our minds and we're not even going to know. I've never experienced that before. So I'm excited as a newbie. I'm excited about what that will be like to get to experience this, not only return, but this new kind of wave that's going to come out where people are just going to be losing their minds. Oh, yeah. No, I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be insane. And I think what really is making people nervous is that um, it is going to be this sort of thing that is going to make everyone else look a little foolish. And I think, (laughs) yeah, I think it's going to make a lot of people look foolish and there are, and you can see like the projections for the other companies and they're all, they all plan, have plans to have their biggest artists drop music in 2025. And it's because there is a lull in K-pop in the West 
-hmm. people aren't as interested. It's because, well, the main interest is in the military right now. Mm -hmm. But they're seeing the trends of it trending down, like sales and stuff like that, even despite there being very large album drops. Right. Um, the streaming numbers are not doing it. So we just got a notice from Weavers. Oh, we did? Yeah. Shit. It's uh, about Namjoon and, and the four that are in the military right now. They just popped up. Um, oh, somebody go look at that and let me know in yeah, Discord. Go look at it. I can't use my. <laughs> yeah, we're on our phones. I've got a but, Discord um, thing yeah. on my team talking to me, so they'll figure it out. But um, what was I saying? Yeah, so yeah. a lot of a lot of them are trending to drop music in 2025, hoping that it's to, it's a coattail thing for sure. Right. But right. they know why they're doing it. But they're doing it because they know 2025 it's going to be in the main news. Right. In and they all want to be European, part of it. British European outlets that BTS is back. BTS is coming. The minute that they announce that album drop, when it's being dropped, it's going to be the other back. And you know how Americans fucking love a fucking ma army guy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And so oh, yeah. These, they're back from the military. They're decorated soldiers. They're dropping yeah. an album. You know? Yeah. <laughs> and so it just goes to show that we, they really did. I mean, they are. They're going to try to come in and be like, oh, we need BTS again to sort of sweep the whole industry back onto the, the map. Right. And be like, BTS is back. And so then it's going to be like, let's see, they are done with basic training and moving into their bases. Okay, good. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Weavers. Okay. It says and it says the notice is asking Army not to send the mail. <laughs> Fucking the, no, they ask them every time. Stop I, sending a mail. Fuck. Nobody listens. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but um, but I think there, you know, there's definitely I, I see it like, oh, so and so is planning on doing a drop in 2025 and 2024 is gonna be kind of a quiet year and blah 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 blah. blah. And it's just like, well, no shit, you know, because <laughs> no one's gonna be writing about it, you know. Right. Right. But then there's, it's going to be all over the news. This is the year BTS is coming back. Oh, the last one's back at the, in June. Oh my God. You know, it's going to be a huge, huge fucking deal. You uh -huh. know? So if they're coming back, if so, if Yoongi's coming back June 21st, mm -hmm. do you think they're going straight into the studio? Do you think, I mean, you know, do you think we're going to get an album within, you know, drop within however many, like, what do you, th what do you kind of get a feeling for? Would anticipate. My guesstimation is that the four who enlisted in December mm -hmm. already laid down their tracks. Wow. And, okay. Yeah, I think they have already laid down because they have already knew that they were going to be doing this. Right. So I think the four who enlisted in December have already laid down their vocals. Because mm -hmm. Namjoon was working his asshole off. <laughs> so, oh, like, and, you know, we're just kind of seeing the trickle down yeah. of his, like, side project. Mm -hmm. But I think Jin is going to be recording two albums. One of them is his. And the other group. And the other is HYYH. Hobie, same. And Yoongi, as he's doing social service, is recording it right now. Right. He's, that's he what can't. I said. He's spending his nights and weekends working on this fucking album. Because he can't. <laughs> yes, yeah. He can. You know? it, it worked because out he's perfectly. Work, he's I mean, working a nine to five. So yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if we see an album within the first four months of them being out. Oh my God, I'm going to die. Like, like third quarter, third quarter, 2025 mm -hmm. album. That's it. That's, that's it. And, it. and with it already being done, it'll already been done for a while. It allows the guys that are getting out in June, a couple months to kind of chill. Right. You right. Know? Then we're just doing photo shoots and, you know, easy right. shit, you know, but they're able with to sleep. Bodies and they're doing all their shirts off again and all that. Right. Yeah. You know, and they're, right. you know, they're, all, they're being slutty and, you know, going yeah. around and doing their thing. So yeah, but I think that's what if if they were based on how Hive has moved, a big hit particularly has done moves in the fast in the past. I think it's the it's 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 already halfway done, <laughs> you know. And then with all once they're all out, then they'll be doing the you know then they'll start filming the promo stuff. Right, right. It's gonna be released along with it, you know. So yeah. I wouldn't even be surprised that, you know, they do like a in the soup. They're all out know. doing the soup. We're getting drunk for a week in this yeah. compound. Yeah, you know, the Northern Lights. Yeah, or yeah, real, yeah, real casual, relaxing. Mm -hmm. But I think most of it's already done. Mm. I wouldn't That's even be surprised funny. if they're booked, and you know, they're already booked. I now is the time if you're going to do a big fucking tour, you start booking it because it takes about, about a year or so to get everything rolling. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't be surprised if Vibe right now is out there like they're they're mapping out what the tour is going to look like, and they're going to start booking it. And they're gonna start getting all that ready. So yeah, it's does that stuff leak at all? Does anybody tell like, oh, we just booked a somebody just booked a tour or a stadium for such and such? How do I get yeah. on that list to know? 
Yeah, I mean, you have to like the stagehand union probably knows. <laughs> no, you know, know but yeah, no, the stadiums, the stadiums are all gonna know. Yeah, you know, they're all gonna know because they're the ones doing the bookings. But they're kind of their their mom's the word. They know that they can't. Yeah, they you know, know they can't. So that's so, but amazing. they're gonna they're gonna it's already being mapped out and everything, and they're gonna they're gonna decide based on availability of these stadiums. They're gonna start. Do you think that was another part of that? Uh, I mean, they had to have had the tenure. Otherwise, they wouldn't be putting the money into the stadiums. They had to know they were going to be signing contracts. As soon as that's done, it gives them the freedom then to start go start signing all kinds of stadium contracts. And yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. I yeah. mean, the minute they resigned, mm -hmm. um, they knew they were like, all right, start booking it. Like that's when that planning started for sure. Right, right. for sure. I mean, just even the way Bang PD spoke and he said, even if they weren't with Big Hit, they would be doing this album. Mm -hmm. Told me that they were already working on that album mm. because they were already doing it. Somebody was already planning something amongst the group to do this. So um, it just so happens that they decided to stay with Big Hit to do it. And mm -hmm. honestly, there aren't any other companies in Korea that could support an act that big. There just wow. isn't. So I wasn't surprised at all that they resigned because who else could afford them? Yeah, where are they going to go? Where could they go? They'd have uh -huh. to start their own company and coming straight out of uh, the military. They, they don't have time for that. Well, <laughs> you know what I mean? percentage like, in this one why would they start i mean they can already grow this one to make more so yeah right i mean it'd be so dumb from what you've they taught me i think you know i mean a little bit they own, of... they own so many they own some they they make so much money just having these stocks mm -hmm. in their back pocket mm -hmm. it would be so fucking dumb i mean they would right. still have the socks even if they left but yeah. since they're so successful mm -hmm. the minute they announce that they're dropping an album like the actual date those stocks are going to skyrocket and right. they've made millions of dollars without even releasing the fucking thing. And then what yeah. did you say? Remind me what you said too about the the part of them sitting on the board, like actually sitting and they have their seats there. They don't use them yet, you were saying, but no, they um they would have to own much they'd have to be a, a majority shareholder to okay. be on the board. But okay. what they were doing beforehand with this first, their second contract when Hybe was formed, mm -hmm. Bang PD was their um their representative on the board. Okay. That's so any, you know, so he was their spokesperson. Mm -hmm. Um, so whenever they would make, they wanted to make decisions or whatever, whatever they would, their voice, they would go through bank PD to do it. Now, if they want to come and sit with the board and actually present something to the board, they just do it themselves. Okay. Um, that's what it was. Okay. Having, having a middleman is, is normal. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't even be surprised if they still have one. Mm -hmm. It's just not bank PD. So it could be a lawyer. It could be someone that BTS hires as a collective to be there because if they're touring and they need to, they, somebody to go on their behalf, right. it's very common for them to do a thing. Okay. So that was another thing when people were freaking out, like, oh, baby, it's yeah. like, no, no, no. He's just mm -hmm. the guy who's walking into the room for them, mm -hmm. yeah. telling them what BTS wants. He can't make any moves for BTS unless he gets approval from BTS for those moves. Um, but so he's not going they, in there he, saying anything willy nilly. He's going in there with their voice. That's how yeah. he's. And, yeah. he, and then when they, and then the board says whatever they need to say and then bts then he turns around and goes to bts mm -hmm. this is what they said what do you think right bts will say their thing right. and he'll go back you know so it, he was their liaison which is normal yeah you know so what a journey this has been for them yeah i mean What's it been like for you? I know this will be kind of, and then, hey, girls, do you guys have any other questions? I kind of, I forgot to ask you guys because you, I can't see your faces. I got Anybody? a ton of questions, but I've just been so fascinated listening. Oh, go ahead, so, Christina. Please carry on. No, carry no, on. No, go ahead, Christina. What do you got? I, I actually was just wondering, I get very upset watching BTS try to navigate the Western media um mm. in terms of the respect that they're willing to give them and even down to the kinds of questions that they ask them during their interviews and i'm just sort of wondering 2025 if you think the media landscape will have changed in terms of the amount of respect that they'll get and i know as army we don't necessarily we're not in the fandom to watch them get awards but at the same time you would just expect that people that have met their level of expertise in their craft that they would be getting rewarded um, mm -hmm. but we know that's not the case. So I don't know. I don't know. I was just curious to see how you felt about whether or not, again, the Western media landscape would change when they came back. Sure. Cause now they're soldiers. I think that's going to have a big, that's going to have a big impact. It made such waves that they had to join the military in the first place. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. and so that's going to be a big thing. Cause these are men that are now trained to kill. And so that automatically clicks something in somebody's head. These aren't babies. <laughs> these are soldiers, right. you know? 
Right. Um, but as for awards, let me just lay this out for you. This might shock you. Beyonce has no main award Grammy. Like she's never won a main Grammy. Beyonce. Wow. So like she's never won album of the year. Man. That's Beyonce. That is, yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> that's Beyonce. And so think of it that way. You know? So and I mean it's blatant racism. Mm-hmm. Totally. You know, she's won best hip hop album, she's won best R and B album. But she's never won best album and arguably renaissance probably should have won that right <laughs> so you know but at the very least renaissance however you feel about her um so the, i think it's going to change whether or not we're going to see recognition in american award shows of like particularly the grammys because they've won billboard they've won the american music awards they've won people choice awards they won all the other american music awards. mtv right. they won everything other than that they one won everything. grammys is the last one I mean, I think at some point they're going to win a Grammy. I think it's going to happen, you know, but whether or not it's, it's going to happen or at least they're going to score Sazy as ace. They're going to Susan Lucian. You know yeah. what I mean? Like that's yeah. going to happen. Yeah. So the Leonardo DiCaprio of the K-pop world. <laughs> that's exactly what it yes. is. You know? Yeah. The irony is that every member of BTS is too old for Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, but I think that's. I think that's what's going to happen. I think they're going to be spoken about differently in the media. Mm -hmm. And I think they're because it's like, damn, y'all were so you went to the military. Right. Because what right. happened to Elvis? Elvis was this teen heartthrob, you know, oh my God. Mm -hmm. Then he went off to war. And then all of a sudden he was Elvis. Elvis mm -hmm. went to war. You know, BTS aren't going to war. Right. Would. <laughs> yeah. You know, but. I think that in and of itself, because that was there was the whole thing of, yeah, like they won't be a boy band exactly. They're gonna be a man group. Man group. <laughs> but but I think you know because there was a whole thing. It was on CNN, and all of these like commentators are like, they're sending them to the military. What the fuck? You know, uh -huh. it was kind of a shock. Right. Your most successful ever. Your most successful export. You're th tossing it in the military. You nuts. You know. And so there was going to be kind of, I think there's going to be a shift, but I mean, only time will tell. They're still going to be the douchebags. Yeah, they're heroes. Even if there is no war, they did something that everybody thinks they shouldn't have had to do. And they did it anyway. They did it willingly, yeah. you know, and so they're going to be like, oh, look at that. The American, media, the American media is not even going to get into that. They don't fucking care about all that. But what it will be is these guys are soldiers. Uh-huh. You know, that's right. it. That's all it's going to matter. Our, our entertainment people don't do that. But damn, if the oh, media right. doesn't like a soldier. Like uh, the minute that they enlisted, I was like, the, the fucking Americans are going to eat this shit up. <laughs> you know? They better not ruin it for us. All the Americans getting involved. Now it's yeah, going to be like, crap. Yeah. I mean, I'm honestly very excited to see what it looks like when Two Silk comes back from the war or the army. <laughs> It'll be so exciting. Yeah. I mean, Jin is going to just milk this and it will be yeah. glorious. He's already glorious. he's already started. He's already yeah. started with his own members. Be like, you better yeah. not fucking look at me. You better yeah. not fucking look at me. Don't even look at me. Don't even smell me. Don't even just keep keep your head down. Otherwise it's 20. You right. know, like he's already he's been doing it. He's like, oh yeah. And the, the the fact that he's as high as he possibly can get for promotion, he has nowhere else to go. He's as high as he can possibly be, you know. He's, loving this shit. he's honestly having the best time <laughs> he's he's gonna be doing a live eating whatever he wants and then yep. just talking yep. to the members yep. through the camera like hey you guys mm -hmm. how you enjoying those military meals right now because i'm having a great yeah. time yeah Act, they apparently oh, yeah. they eat good at base that's so. what they were saying Jim's course, i don't believe it unless you so say hard. it but you know <laughs> i have never been so invested in knowing what they feed the korean military as i am right now i had a TikTok <laughs> pop up and it wasn't about BTS, so I watched it. But it was like what a day being just on base looks like. Mm -hmm. They eat good, man. I need to know the macro breakdown. I need to know what to prepare for. Yeah, they, well, they, they, they have a lot better than they were eating before. Because they were eating ramen and just trying not to eat anything. They're getting like 200 I mean, just, They're getting like 2,000 calories, mm -hmm. like a meal. Like just they're based on the way they protein. Look. Yeah, they're eating good. Yeah. <laughs> they're real good. I was like, damn, they had like steak and shit. I was like, what the hell? <laughs> I was like, you're the supposed to be going through it. You're supposed to, supposed to be sleeping under trucks. What are you doing? Yeah. They're having a great time. They're not pouches <laughs> of food like in America when they send you off to, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, honestly, this is probably the least they've worked in a decade. So they're probably like, oh, this is all I have to do now? Okay, yeah. that's fine. 
Yes. Funny ones. I did see like what it is to be a drill sergeant, which is what Jin and Hobie are doing. And they they get maybe five hours of sleep a night, which is probably average for when they were like touring and stuff, but they're working hard every day. Yeah. Every yeah. day they're working hard. Yeah. So but they're but it's the same thing every day. They know exactly what to anticipate for every day. Yeah. <laughs> they have well, they have very they clear rules. They kind of would like the routine of it. I mean, I know I know Yungi was saying that. I would just like to see, you know, just that routine of the same thing's gonna happen every day. I get up and I go do something. Yeah. Yeah, wake um, up at 7 really 30, you know, eat breakfast, take a shower, put your suit on, get on the train, sit in your cubicle, answer your emails, go to lunch. Just that every day, I uh -huh. think, is something that they're probably kind of enjoying. Yeah. <laughs> a routine, uh -huh. you know, just a daily routine of the same thing. Like Very once healthy. those four have moved on to their bases, now they're going to have that routine of that here's your job, and here's what you do. So I think they're probably kind of thriving. I think that's why they're thriving. <laughs> so all I, mean, yeah, so I was gonna say every time i see hobie well every time i see you don't really see jen as much but every time you see a picture of hobie he fucking looks like he's completely in his element i mean he is what? just yeah. like owning every second of it tight the tightest marching lines in the south korean military you kidding me I'm telling you he loves it i mean i'm an army brat i always joke i'm an army brat i grew up my dad was in the military and yeah. so a man in a man in camo i'm sorry i'm done for and then when they, i was telling the girls when he did that photo when he was kind of squatting down and helping that person with their rifle and he had that military watch on i was like i'm done for done i didn't have to even <laughs> see his face didn't even see the face and i was like sold sold happy as a clam <laughs> what's up dana hey, look he's here shay's here I didn't really want shit. I don't know how I got up here, but I was just gonna say that when I come through, I'm still in that portrait sitting behind you. <laughs> yeah, that one. <laughs> that one? <laughs> I've been looking at it the entire time we're sitting here. I just thought you know when I come through Chicago, I'm getting it right up off you. Ah, uh, so if it's missing, I know exactly who took it. <laughs> you get a phone call from me. <laughs> I can't <laughs> I'm just like, bitch, you took my picture. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna post it in the truck, stick it up on the on the door. That's awesome. You have it mounted to the front. Just go yeah, and put, 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 put it in the, in the passenger seat. Just have him ride with me everywhere. Oh, That's shit. Crazy. <laughs> okay, any last questions? We've already taken an hour and 17 minutes of your time. Let's see. Does anybody have a last question? I have one. I have one. Yeah. What would you say to baby army, or I call myself a toddler army, uh, who feel like maybe they missed out and they're just sort of getting into it? What would you say to them? um yeah that just sucks <laughs> everyone, everyone, kind of, everyone kind of has that moment where that's you know you start getting into it and you're like we're i'm never gonna catch up you yeah. know um the fact of the matter is you're not gonna i still haven't you know it just just from those like two years that i was just kind of like i don't want to have anything to do with this you know it, it, there's always there's always gonna be something but not right. to worry about it. like anybody who comes at you and tries to quiz you like, oh, well, can you name the bloop bloop and try to like football fan your way? Can you name any yeah. of the players on the fucking Steelers? Eh, eh. You know, if anybody who comes at you to try to do that dumb shit, just be like, fuck you, bud. Like, I'm just here because yeah. this is a good time. So never feel pressure or overwhelmed and feel like you have to know everything because I'm going to tell you right now, I don't know everything at all. Like, there's no way. There's no way. You know, no way. It's, it's actually impossible just without how much. Like, they have how many hundreds of songs? It's insane, you know? And there are going to be moments when you're like, I don't think I've ever heard this one. Yep. What the fuck? You know? And you have, but there's just so many, mm -hmm. you know? So, do you, you know, So do I, you like seeing New Army? Because even me as a toddler army, I love when I see people who have only been here for a few months. Mm -hmm. Do you like seeing people, new people? Yes and no. Sometimes it's kind of stressful because the ones sometimes the new person finds out you've been around for a while and then the barrage of questions starts coming your way. Right, like ours. Uh -huh. That can be that can be kind of stressful. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, I think it's fine enough that the the the, the, um, the fandom's growing. It's going to it's going to keep going. So there's going to be new folks all the time, and I think it's great. Like I've been watching it grow for all of these years, and it went from being like a niche thing to like a very populated sort of thing. The only time it gets annoying is when you start people start getting on your ass because you're old. I'm like, listen, <laughs> listen. <laughs> you know, that's the only time yeah, it's just like, no one, yeah. you know, fuck off with yourself. But otherwise, no, I say, you know, it's, I think it's good. I think it's, it's the, it's, um, there are obviously growing pains. There are times where, you know, when new folks start coming in, because every time something is released, there's a new wave that comes in, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. um, 
And there's always a little bit of stress with that because you never know if someone's going to be shitty. Right. And I think what, because the more people there are, the more chances of something shitty happening will happen. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it's the new ones that sometimes fall into the solo stand behavior too, which can be a little, you know, stressful. Um, but I think at the end of the day, it's as long as people are in with good intentions and just enjoying themselves, that's mm -hmm. like the best you can ask for. Whether right. they're new, middle-aged, they've been around for the whole time, whatever it may be. Right. So you just make sure you just people just need to have the right intentions. People are asking me, and I meant to ask you that is on my list. How did you come up with the Elizabeth names? Somebody, when fucking, somebody mentioned it to me. Like they cracked a joke to me. And I thought it was so fucking funny. And I said, dude, I'm taking it. <laughs> I'm taking this. I was oh like, and I'm gonna run with it. And they're like, what do you, what could you possibly make out of this? I was like, <laughs> oh, mark my words. Mark my motherfucking uh -huh. words. When it comes to the other, like their confirmation name, that I try to match per, like specifically to them. Uh -huh. Jungkook's a Samantha. That's it. <laughs> you know, he's a Samantha. You know? That's amazing. So, well, yeah. it's interesting because, like, you know, when you were talking about all the all the content, all the stuff, I know that you know we've got our we've got a full team of people that's just going through all old content. And I know when I first when we first started. And you're looking at the first couple of albums, you're like, this is totally doable. This is totally doable. And then I started looking at, you know, proof and all these other ones. And I'm like, there's like 10,000 pieces of content per, you know, when you're looking at all to try to sort, there's no way you're ever going to catch up. I mean, we are trying as a, as a project to get, at least give you the, some of the best stuff, but there's so much you could be swimming in this for the next 40 years, but they keep making new. So you're never going to catch up. So, I mean, Never. just even look at the Permission to Dance DVD they released. There's like five hundred dollars of content on that. Yeah, <laughs> and one DVD. The five. I still have my head, by the way. <laughs> yeah. So, I haven't even I haven't even started to scratch the surface on that. Well, Watch I, it can all tell, I can tell you right now, just from this, I know we're going to cover HYYH on our month when we do it in a couple of months. I think March, but. I think you're going to get a lot of requests from people for you to do a deep dive into that because there were a lot of people like, I'm so confused. I don't know that you're going to get one, to be honest. <laughs> I don't know that I would actually be able to articulate that because it is, a lot of it is run, it runs on you know, like pure adrenaline and emotion, the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Like none of it is really like intelligible. It's really yeah. difficult. It's really difficult mm -hmm. because they're, it's the, they're silent in these videos. They, the, the songs are there, but otherwise the, what you're seeing them do, it's silent. It's like a pantomime almost. Uh -huh. So it's going to be really hard. It's it's really hard to explain it and to explain it precise, like cohesively, uh -huh. because it's like, all right, well, here's Namjoon and Namjoon X, Y, and Z. And then he runs into Tay, who X, Y, and Z. And then, but before he runs into Tay, this happens and that affects this over here, this one time with Hobie. You know, so it's like, uh -huh. it's really, you know, and then, and then Yoongi and Jungkook, something weird is happening there. You know, so it's like, there's a lot of, <laughs> really hard to explain in a really, I mean, even the comic that they released struggled to explain it. Um, the, the drama that they're releasing is based on the one comic, but it's in, it's integrated with HYYH, whereas the characters' names are the, um, Chaco characters, but they have the last name of the member that that character integrates with, and their storyline is based through HYYH, but it's part of the super niche. Wow. <laughs> it's like, it's like, like Inception. It's like multiple layers of Inception. Yeah. So you're going to, it's going to be tough. <laughs> it's going to be tough. Good luck. Okay, well, man, just long. enjoy it for what it is. Just enjoy yeah. it for what it is. Yeah, like, don't to try to read too much. Is. And then there's the notes. Somebody brought up the notes. Yeah, there's notes. There's two full volumes of the notes. There's two of them. Um, those can help you, but those are not in chronological order. <laughs> they bounce through time. Well, and the mine, I, got, I got mine, but they're all in Hangul, so I can't actually read any of it. Oh, they have the actual book. Oh, they do? Okay, I need to get the book yeah. book. If they, they have the actual books. You might be able to get them on Weavers. I have the two of them. But they're based on, it'll have the date and then a snippet of a story. And apparently it's all from Jin's perspective because Jin's a time traveler. When I said that, I was serious. <laughs> so he's a time traveler. And so it's all dates and then it's all in our, like, and then those dates are shown. You can see them in the music videos on certain things. You can see the dates. And then they still to this day will release things based on those dates. Wow. So if anybody asked me for a deep dive, <laughs> no. 
<laughs> you got your answer, everybody, because everybody was asking you in the comments. That's a no for cool. me, dog. They're live just to cover this before the next album comes out. Or yeah, yeah. Good luck. I would pick pick one pick one part of it to do. I wouldn't mm -hmm. try to explain the whole thing. The try, whole thing. I would explain the base, the original storyline. Try sh there. Can you bring out the the map with the string again? <laughs> I mean, you might need a map with a string. Yeah, I mean, I, <laughs> you might. I mean, it's, starting a map I mean, at one point, Yoongi is being pulled out of a fire by John Cookie, and it's like, I don't know. It's insane. It's insane. That's Hobie's abandoned by his mother. Gina, it's she's pure a chaos. Institution. It's chaos pure chaos. Is good, I guess. I guess. So. Well, that's amazing. Well, I want to thank you can. for doing this because I know you gave us a lot of your time. I really appreciate you doing this. Like, yes, you're our first you. official person. We're so excited. So, this was a lot of fun. Everybody really loved it. Yeah, it was. Good. Thank it you was so amazing. much. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Fun talking to you. That's for yeah. sure. I cackled, but I was on mute, so you couldn't hear it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a lot of cackling on mute. Yeah, hopefully we'll get you back yeah. another time and we can we can do this again. Maybe once Jen's back, we can all have fun and see sure. how that's yeah, going. Just let me know. Yes. Yeah, that would be amazing. Thanks, everybody, yeah. for coming. Look at that. Look at Thank you, everyone. Look, Thanks, guys, everybody. Everybody. You're, you're the best. Thing I love you. Yeah. Um, okay, go stay warm. Everybody go stay warm. Oh, yeah. Don't yeah. turn let your let your uh your sink strip a little tonight because yes. you don't want your pipes to freeze. Pro tip, pro the tip. Don't let this pipe right there. She knows don't what let she's talking breathe. about. <laughs> yeah, she knows what she's talking about. Okay, good night, everybody. Thank you. Thanks. Good night, everybody. Good night, Dana. Good night. Thanks, Dana. Good night, Dana. Thank you. Good night.